Dear friends in poetry, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to one and all. I wish all of you a very happy World Poetry Day. My name is Neil Deswani. I'm based in Singapore. By way of background, I'm a retired banker who took to writing poetry roughly three years ago and have since published uh, six volumes of poetry. My work has been showcased at the Jaipur Literature Festival, the Bangalore Literature Festival, as well as the Singapore Writers Festival and the Singapore Book Publishers Association. I'm absolutely delighted to participate in the Pragati E. Vichar Poetry Festival 2023, and just wanted to thank the management and organizers of Front List for including me in the lineup of poets you will hear from today. Today, uh, I intend to recite poetry, some of it from, my, from the books that I've published, as well as share some new material. Some of the poems I've chosen are about the actual act of writing poetry and all the emotionality that surrounds that. I also wanted to share poems based on legendary figures from the great Hindu epic Mahabharata, as well as a few poems on more modern Indian themes. Without further ado, the first poem I'm going to recite is a poem titled Kal, and the uh, subtitle is My Mobius Ring. So Kal. How very economical, yet how utterly confusing it is for the novice that Hindi chose to use the same word for the day that is yet to come, the morrow that awaits you in the wings, bringing with it all the uncertainty of the unknown, the untold, the unrevealed, and the exact same word for the day that has just gone by with its immutable burden of what has already happened, the cartons of spilt milk that it is no use crying over, the yesterday that you chronicle but cannot change. If tomorrow will soon become yesterday once the karmic wheel gets on its way, then perhaps neither anxiety nor regret will help you seize the day. Thank you. So a bit of a backstory to that. I started learning Hindi formally only at the age of 13, and uh, uh, I was very intrigued by the use of kal, uh, working both ways, going in two directions, as it were. So a bit of a backstory to that. Um, as I promised, some poems about uh, writing, and all poets have a love-hate relationship with their muse. So the title of this next poem is My Muse Returns. <clears throat> You've been gone too long. All these weeks have been hollow, empty fields that have lain fallow in a complete absence of song. I know not the exact seasons to your meandering ways, nor can I discern all the reasons behind some of your indefinite stays. You gave no warning of your flight. No heralds will trumpet your return. But there is birdsong to this night, a hint, an offer I must not spurn. Thank you. On the 1st of Jan of this year, I, I thought I'd just uh, do something different and I wrote a poem which was titled Happy New Year Wishes and Thoughts for, for My Fellow Poets. And I think it's equally applicable today. Uh, a, it's the equinox and uh, B, it's World Poetry Day. So I think it's something worth reading out again. So here goes. May your muse never desert you. May your trickle become a stream. May you find your poems and forests on the mountains and in your dreams. May the skies reveal their secrets. May you chance upon the words. May you mouth them very slowly when you recite them to the birds. May you sing out songs of sunrise. May you know the magic of the moon. May you whisper to the evening wind. May your zither learn these tunes. May your fingers and hand never tire. May you find the rhythm and the rhyme. May you work upon this craft you love in this new year, may you find the time. So that was just uh, goodwill and uh, New Year's greetings to all my fellow poets, some of whom I'm, I hope are on, on this call. 
Uh, a similar theme, uh, a poem I wrote recently titled Message in a Bottle. Message in a Bottle. Carry a pigeon of the seas, flask of hope, flagon of prayer, valiant voyager, determined to deliver. May you find your way through the great oceans, past their ebb and flow, dancing in tandem to the rise and fall, the crest and surf of waves. Carafe of courage, you pitch and bob, buoyant through storm and calm. May you circumnavigate these waters, buffeted by wind and current, to the, reach the safety of some shore where the reader might make room in their heart and give shelter to these words, words that I have kept bottled up for far too long. Thank you. Shifting gears a little bit, um, I'm gonna share with you a poem titled, Oh Brave Soldiers. And uh, this is a poem I wrote for a contest that was sponsored by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in India in tandem with the Defense DPD division. And uh, I'm pleased to share with you and very honored that this poem was selected uh, to get the runners up prize. And uh, here goes, Oh Brave Soldiers. For all the brave soldiers of Bharat, you who went to war, pledged allegiance to your country, who could ask for more? To protect her and defend her, no matter what the cost, giving up your lives for her, so wars would not be lost. You fought for us in Longawal, in Titawal, and in Siachen, all the sacrifices that you made in comrades and in men. For all the brave soldiers of India, you who went to war, bringing honor to your family and honor to your core. Thank you. So that uh, poem in part was dedicated to my father-in-law who uh, uh, passed away at the uh, ripe old age of 94. And uh, he um, fought not only in uh, a number of these wars, but also fought uh, in World War II. So I was definitely thinking of him when I at this point. Moving on to a poem that I've read out um, uh, called in Singapore uh, at a poetry event uh, sponsored by a very well-known poet, uh, Dr. Chris Mooney Singh. It's called Teranga. Teranga. So what is truly meant by Bhagwa or the rich saffron color? How do I renounce self-interest? Show courage, valor. The second segment a band of peaceful white, reminding me to always walk the path of light in its center, the Ashok Chakra, the wheel of law, of dharma, the single truth on which I draw to move forward. As an Indian, I can't stand still. We all have a future to weave, a destiny to fulfill, which keeps me grounded to this very fertile land to the greenness of life, the third and final band. Thank you. I promised I'd uh, share a few poems uh, drawn from the Mahabharata, and the first of these is uh, a poem titled, O Ashwatthama. And uh, as the title suggests, it's about uh, one of the central figures, uh, in many ways, a very complex uh, character, uh, and as all of us are, I'm sure, um, ingredients of great good and equally uh you know uh, tragic flaws perhaps so um i wanted to share this and many of you know the backdrop to ashwatthama so let me read the poem and perhaps i'll circle back and just uh, uh you know sort of bring it together oh ashwatthama oh ashwatthama oh chiranjivi oh ashwatthama oh long-lived one over lands you stride and seas you cross a rolling stone won't gather moss. O oh, Ashwatthama, all clad in white, you pace this earth throughout the night. O oh, Ashwatthama, with staff in hand, you walk, you walk, till you can barely stand. O oh, Ashwatthama, O oh, Chiranjivi, O oh, Ashwatthama, O oh, penitent. They've judged you harshly, have they not? The blood from your wound won't form a clot. O oh, Ashwatthama, O oh, Chiranjivi, O oh, Ashwatthama, O oh, wanderer. O oh, Ashwatthama, you've known no rest. 
Oil just will not staunch the flow. Soon the bleeding starts again. You sigh, you sigh, and on you go. O oh, son of Drona, destroyer of the Pandu clan, do the cries still haunt you when you're alone at night of burning children in the blazing light? Excuse me. Tell me, tell me, O oh, Ashwatthama, O oh, firebrand, as you ran out into that awful night, Duryodhana dying called it just a, just a gash, a deflected blow from a sleepy knife. But well you knew it for what it was, the brand, the brand, the curse you've carried throughout your useless long-lived life. O Ashwatthama, O Chiranjeevi, O Ashwatthama, O long-lived one, O Ashwatthama, they all told lies. It was only your namesake, the elephant, that died. So perhaps for the benefit of the uh, very few who uh, are not that familiar uh, with that aspect of the Mahabharata and the Kurukshetra War, um, uh, Guru Dronacharya, who was well nigh uh, undefeatable on the battlefield, was uh, uh, brought uh, to uh, the ground, really, and where he, he was beheaded, ultimately, uh, uh, by ambiguity, perhaps, and dare I say deceit. Uh, employed by the Pandavas in neutralizing him on the field of battle. And um, subsequently, an enraged Ashwatthama towards the end of the Kurukshetra War sneaks into the Pandav camp, burns it down, killing women and children. You know, well nigh indiscriminately, he's uh, then cursed by Krishna to wander the earth as a Chiranjeevi, well, effectively forever. And, uh, um, you know, my poem takes... Uh, View of some element of sympathy towards him, obviously having to pace the uh, earth forever. So uh, that that particular poem features in my poetry collection, All the Shades of Truth, and uh, it is available uh, on uh, uh, um, kitab, uh, www.kitab.com. I'm now going to move from Ashwatthama to another very central character, or characters rather, uh, and this poem is titled, and I'm giving it away, Mother and Son Reunion. So it's about that very poignant uh, interaction just before the start of the Kurukshetra War between Kunti and Karna Kunti trying to uh, beg uh, in advance uh, to Karna to spare the lives of her five uh, uh, sons, the Pandav princes. And of course, at this stage, uh, she has revealed her identity as his mother. And uh, the poem is written in the form of a dialogue between the two of them. So mother and son reunion. You will be the first amongst equals. You'll have your place in the sun. Welcome back to the fold, oh, my eldest son. Does that not have a ring? Think of all the glory such a title would bring. The new leader of the Pandu clan, shining new jewel among Kshatriyas. The world would bow to you, every last man. My dearest Queen Kunti, your offer's too kind, but alas, I cannot accept it, for I've made up my mind. You denied me my birthright for all of these years, you suffer many a slight. King of Anga is who I am, and that's who I will be. Duryodhan, my own dearest friend, he anointed me. On the eve of this war, you asked me to switch sides, but my dharma compels me to show him loyalty. Through thick and thin will I stay by his side. Son, reunited are we after half a lifetime to then kill your own brothers. Would that not be a crime? To wage war on them, that would be a sin. I beseech you, Karna, not to kill your own kin. Queen Kunti, O oh royal mother of the band of five, I will promise you only this. I swear that in battle I will keep four sons alive. When it is all over, you will still be, you will still be the mother of five. Only one son will you miss in the great battle to come, Arjuna or I. One of us will die. Thank you. 
Moving uh, several thousands of years uh, forward to the uh, freedom struggle, and uh, uh, I wanted to uh, read out uh, a poem, uh, which once again I've read out at a poetry group in Singapore called Lal Bal Pal, and uh, uh, three freedom fighters. Uh, uh, to all of us familiar with the uh, with those times, uh, uh, the poem refers to Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Ganga Tilak and Bipin Chandra Paul, collectively known as Lal Bal Pal. Lal Bal Pal, our Swadeshi fighters three, took the battle to the British and insisted we be free. Bal in Marathi means a baby. Tilak was anything but that. Swaraj is my birthright, said he, determined to be free. Pal was a journalist who came from the city of Silhet. He preached the use of boycott to everyone he met. Lal was a banker who founded the PNB, this lion of a man, Punjab Kesari, defying the Rowlet Act. He became a detainee. Lal Balpal, our Swadeshi fighters three, took the battle to the British and insisted we be free. Thank you. I'm going to move back, if I may, to the theme of poetry and two very short poems to close it out. And uh, oftentimes uh, poets will get asked what their favorite poem is. And that's a very difficult question. And there is no one answer to that. And in many ways, uh, each each poem is like a little child you, you uh, respect and, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, each one is special. But if you were to unpack that further, and if anyone were to ask, what is the one line you want to be remembered by or remembered for? And a uh, little cheeky, tongue in cheek, I wrote this poem called The One Line, and hopefully you will recognize in its cadence something that a number of you will be familiar with. So uh, without further ado, The One Line. The one line that says it all, the one line that blinds you, the one line you must recall when the darkness finds you, the one line you never wrote, the one line you've lost, the one line you'll never quote, the line you cruelly tossed. So with sincere apologies uh, and homage to J.R.R. Tolkien, one of my favorite authors, but uh, uh, the cadence was written around the one ring. I think it's appropriate now that, uh, again, keeping with the theme of verse and rhyme, and I end with a poem which is once again uh, featured as the final poem in uh, All the Shades of Truth. And um, surprise, surprise, the title is End Word. So from line to the last word. And well, I get to have the last word on this occasion, I guess. End word. I searched too long for that end word. I searched too long for that end word. You saw no reason. I found no rhyme. The poem not written never gets heard. Inicio and finito bookends of time. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the poetry recital and all the best for the rest of the day. And I'm sure you and my fellow poets are going to have a great time together. Goodbye and thank you.